a four-stroke model internal combustion engine part two, attempting to start the engine, which did not happen, dismantling it to look at the piston ring, then refitting the piston into the cylinder and checking the rotary valve dimensions. I recorded this video in the workshop of my friend Andrew. He has a YouTube channel called Model Engineering Adventures and it's well worth a look. You can see what he's currently working on. There was no possible way that this engine could start, so it's straight into the dismantling of it. I really don't know why the connecting rod is chewed up, but that's of no consequence for the moment. The main thing is, the piston ring is not right. When the engine was together on the test stand, when I moved the propeller, it felt completely wrong. And I think this has something to do with it. In this clip, Andrew is trying to refit the piston into the cylinder. And as you can clearly see here, with the piston ring fitted, the piston is very tight in the bore. Unlike most piston rings, it needs a piston ring compressor to compress the piston ring in order to insert it into the bore. I've never seen any piston ring compressors that work at this size. I've always used either a Jubilee clip or a cable tie. It's top tip time. A very simple procedure. First of all, you push the piston into the cylinder liner. Then you use a cable tie around the piston ring. This compresses the piston ring and makes it exactly the same diameter as the piston. So all you have to do is press on the top of the piston and the piston and piston ring go into the bore. Simple. In this next clip I'm going to demonstrate how tight the piston is in the bore. I'm actually shaking this up and down and the piston's not sliding anywhere. It's really firmly stuck into the bore. And here my friend Andrew, who made the engine, is verifying that indeed the piston, when fitted with the ring, is very tight indeed. Andrew removed the piston ring to have a look at it, and here it is, sat on a stool. At this stage I suggested that we refit the piston to the liner, which was quite easy to do, without the piston ring. When I put my hand over the top of the cylinder and moved the piston up and down inside the liner, the piston seal in the bore was very good. Currently, Andrew is about to reassemble the engine without the piston ring to see what happens. The bore, as I mentioned in the previous episode, is perfect. The finish is beautiful. I'm going to run the video at a high speed whilst Andrew reassembles the engine. As I also mentioned in the previous episode, this engine was Andrew's first attempt at an internal combustion engine. And believe me, they are not easy to make. I've never made one. I've broken a few in model plane crashes. But with the price of internal combustion engines like this, I never felt the need to make one. The rotary valve is made from a piece of silver steel, and Andrew's demonstrating that it does actually seal quite well. In no time at all, the engine was reassembled and ready to try again. Viewer discretion required. This next clip shows Andrew using an Allen key as a Tommy bar on the spinner that he made. Yes, the Allen key through the hole in the spinner does tighten it onto the crankshaft, but it makes a bit of a mess of the edge of the hole in the spinner itself. It's best to use either a special Tommy bar or a screwdriver of the same diameter. And I don't wish to be picky, but it's also a good idea to put the propeller on the right way round. I know about these things because for many years I used to fly radio-controlled aircraft. Now, as you can clearly see, I am able to flick over the propeller and the crankshaft revolves easily. The problem is, there isn't any compression. When I tried the piston, Without the ring, in the cylinder, there was plenty of compression and a loud pop when you removed it. And now the engine's back together, there is no compression whatsoever. What is the problem? Is there an air leak around the top of the cylinder liner? There could be, but there's no oil showing around the top of the cylinder itself. Almost every one of the small aero engines that I have in my collection have a sealing washer on top of the liner where it meets the head. But this engine does not have a washer in this position. I connected the glow plug 
and there's definitely fuel going into the engine. The line from the tank is full of fuel with no air. And as you can clearly see, it doesn't work at all. I've removed the glow plug, and once again, when I turn the propeller, it's very free and very easy to turn. This is not a two-stroke or a four-stroke, it's a no-stroke engine. On the day we made this video, I arrived at Andrew's workshop with my electric starter, but we didn't have a power supply for it. Then I had an idea. Using an electric drill and the insert from the electric starter, we attempted to start the engine this way, which wasn't perfect, but it did eventually rotate the propeller. And guess what? It didn't start. After I made this video, I went back home and bought a battery, which arrived yesterday. So I now have a 12 volt battery for my starter for the next time we have a go at starting this thing. Even though this engine does not have too many moving parts, it's difficult to find out which one of the moving parts is not doing what it's supposed to be doing. Maybe it's more than one. This is a rotary valve and it's quite a good fit in the sleeve, but it's not working. Looking at the ports, are they correct? Well, Andrew and I looked at the drawings, and they match the drawings, so I would assume that this is OK. Andrew is going to make a better piston ring for the engine. We tried a solid piece of bar in place of this valve, and there was still no compression. So, why isn't there any compression? I have a few theories why this engine doesn't work, and hopefully we should find out in the next episode. Until then, stay safe, stay healthy, thanks for watching, and I hope you found it useful. Please take the time to visit my Main Steam Models website, and click on the section of the website that says Video Playlists. And by doing that, you can find other videos that you may like to watch. And by using the playlists, you can actually watch the videos back to back.